This might be the number one question that Christians are asking right now and have been asking for so many years. And what that is, is what is God's will for my life? And in today's video, I'm gonna show you one simple key in scripture that will unlock the will of God in your life starting today. As we start this video, I just wanna encourage you that if you've been asking this question or been wondering or pondering, God, what is your will for my life? Like, what should I be doing? What should I be pursuing? What is my career? What about my family? What about my business? I want, you, I want you to know something, that the word of God, the words of Jesus make it so simple and clear because he desires that we would walk in such intimacy with him, that we would understand his heart and his words in such a way that it would unlock us into our identity and destiny that he has for our lives. And so I wanna share with you four quick scriptures. Listen, I know you heard four scriptures, like that's too much. The word of God is needed in every single day of our lives. And so if you would just stick with me for these four scriptures, I guarantee this could potentially transform your life. So let's get into number one. Now, as we get into these four scriptures, I wanna lay some quick context. Each of these scriptures are some of the final words that Jesus said before he left the earth, right after he resurrected. And if there's anybody's words that I wanna to listen to, it's probably the words of Jesus. And so these are gonna come out of the gospels, which are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then I'm also gonna read one that's out of the book of Acts. So are you guys ready? Buckle up, it's gonna get good. Let's go right now to Mark chapter 16. This is known as the Great Commission. Listen to what Jesus says here. Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone, anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. Check this out. These miraculous signs will follow those that believe. We don't chase miracles, they chase us. Okay, that's a whole other sermon, but let's keep going. They will cast out demons in my name and they will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. Now go with me really quick to Matthew, the last chapter of Matthew. This is so powerful as well. This is another, this is the Great Commission as well, but in a little bit of different words. And listen to what it says, Matthew 28, Jesus came and told the disciples, please pay attention, so powerful. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands they have given you, and listen to this. Be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You're like, Ross, what does it have to do with the will of God for my life? Do you wanna be a photographer? Do you wanna be, do you wanna work in full-time ministry? Do you wanna be, you know, in business, in politics, in the creative space, whatever you wanna do, this is what, this is how simple it is. So you might be asking, what in the world does this have to do with the will of God for my life? It's really seriously this simple. You wanna be a photographer? Perfect, go be a photographer, work as hard as you can, and while you're there, preach the gospel, make disciples, heal the sick, cast out devils. Oh, hey, you wanna work in business or you wanna be a politician, you wanna be a doctor, awesome, go do that. And while you're there, preach the gospel, baptize people in the name of the Lord Jesus, lay your hands on the sick, and let miracles flow through your life. And you're like, Okay, that's really it. That is really it. Jesus' greatest desire is one, to be with you, but number two, for the co Great Commission to flow through your life in whatever sphere of society that you're in. So I wanna show you two more quick scriptures just to back this up and to give you even more context and understanding and revelation of the scriptures. John chapter 20, uh, verse number 21. This is the Lord. He just resurrected. The disciples are in a room. They're scared. They don't know what to think. And Jesus appears through the wall. And this is what he says. He says, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Friend, why is this so powerful? What Jesus was doing in this moment is he was commissioning the disciples, aka you and I, to do the very things he did. What the Father sent him to do is now what he has sent us to do. So the will of God for our lives is to live a life like Jesus and to do the things Jesus did. Because so many times when people ask for the will of God, what they're really asking is, what should my career be? What school should I go to? Which are great questions. But I think Jesus is not really concerned about where we go or what business we take up, but more concerned that if we do the work of the ministry that he told us in scripture, no matter what place of society we're in. Because here's the truth, we need believers who are filled with the Holy Spirit in every major sphere of society to release the gospel, preach the gospel, to release the kingdom of God, to lay hands on the sick, to cast out devils, and to see people saved, healed, delivered, baptized, and plugged in to the local church. Here's where I wanna end, the final words of Jesus before he ascended back up to the Father. Listen to what he says, the book of Acts chapter one, verse seven. 
He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere to the ends of the the earth. Friend, I want to tell you today, two things you can do is number one, what are you passionate about? And number two, what is something that you're actually talented or gifted in? That's a really good place to start. And then once you pursue that, once you give your effort to that, do what Jesus said right here. Understand that you receive the Holy Spirit when you get saved. You have his power to be his witness to the ends of the earth in every sphere of society. The greatest thing that you and I could give our time, our attention, our resources, and our lives to is one, being with Jesus, and two, leading other people to him. You see, we live a life where we want to be so fixed on the heavenly realities that the earthly pleasures die in our life. And I want to encourage you today through these scriptures that we talked about that the will of God for your life is to do what you're passionate about and to do what you have talent. That's really practical. But then once you're in that place to release the kingdom of heaven through your life, to preach the gospel, heal the sick, lay your hands on people, cast out devils, and to receive the power through the Holy Spirit to be his witnesses to the ends of of the earth. This is the will of God for your and I's life. And so you're going to see a video pop on the screen right here. Make sure to click it. I believe it's going to be powerful and help you on your journey and walk with God.